couple of months ago, I received the sweetest email from a girl called Ivy. She told me if I'm ever in Forshan to let her know and she'll take me around all the yummy foods. And bless her heart, she actually prepared three separate detailed Forshan based food adventures so I could choose one that I like the look of. So since I'm here in Shunda, which is a district of Forshan city, I let her know and I'm actually on my way to meet with her now. We're meeting at Hongxing Guangfa Bao Zai Fan, one of the most popular places in Shunda for Bao Zai Fan. So here I am with Ivy. How are Hi, you? Hi guys, I'm good. Here's the Hongxing Guangfa Bao Zai Fan. It's good. like a first stop of like everybody visits Shunda. And here they have an entire menu dedicated to all different types of Bao Zai Fan. What exactly is a bao zai fan? They will use some kind of pot here, special pot, and yeah. you put more ice in it. And then after like maybe 15 minutes later, then you will add some warm meat in it. The rice will absorb every, wow, everything <laughs> from the meat. Today we went for the OG bao zai fan, which is topped with Cantonese sausage lap chong. Sick fan long. My way of eating, I would be like uh, mix everything first. So Ooh. yes. Oh, look how good that looks. Yes. It smells amazing too. Yes, exactly. This is the most simple way to do to do everything. You buy Cantonese sausage, you just chop it and put and dump it into like very the simple. Rice. Yeah, taste it, taste it. You have a strong taste of mm. alcohol, or something, and a little bit salted. Mm. Salted, slightly sweet as well. Exactly. But like a really nice texture in my mouth, a little chewy. Thank Get you some you. sausage. Oh, thank you very much. Some lovely rice. Oh, the crispy bottom. Yeah, yeah. The most important part about Zai Fan is the crystal thing in the bottom. You can see here the golden crispy oh. thing. I want to enjoy the full impact of this dish. So I'm going to get a little bit of crispy rice, a little bit of soft rice, uh -huh. and, and a lap chong. Lap chong. Lap chong. Lap chong. Lap chong. Lap chong. <laughs> and I'm going to just put it all in. Oh my god! Yes, yes, this yes. This is going to yes. be good. Mm -hmm. Oh! Wait, wait. That's what happened. So here's a pot in your mouth. <laughs> yeah! Crispy, soft, witty, salt. Yep. It's everything. You know what? Hosek. 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 Two Hosek. Hosek, Hosek, Hosek. <laughs> you pick it up in the very fast. Moa, moa, moa. Hi, hi, hi. Amy. No, hi, Ivy. Now that you mentioned, I think it's important that I have tried this way. Yep. I would hopefully have a party in my mouth. Mm. My mouth talking to me that it likes the party inside. <laughs> Where are we, Ivy? What's this? We are in Qinghuiyuan, one of the famous four gardens in Guangdong area. So this oh. is the first, uh, f most famous one. In Guangdong, in the entire province? Yes, in oh. Guangdong province. One of the things I loved about this garden was all of the stained glass windows. It's something I've never seen in a traditional Chinese garden before, and it was super, super pretty. It's kind of like specific uh, technique that we borrow from Western. It's very expensive to make one. Another thing that struck me was just how tropical this garden was. Other traditional Chinese gardens I've seen in the past that are also a lot further north in the country usually look a bit like this. So I found it very interesting to see traditional Chinese architecture among waterfalls and all these tropical beautiful plants. This is so pretty. Yes. It's like a tropical garden paradise. Ni jue da hao kan ma? Ni jue da hao kan jue No, bu shi wo! We're walking up to the top of this waterfall and it gives me, you know, sea world going on the, you know, the water slide vibes. We're going up to the very top yeah, and we're gonna, go. <laughs> gonna slide all the way down. I can confirm there was in fact no water slide at the top. Oh, look at this view. So you've got this park here and then kind of surrounded by all the buildings. Yeah. Love the garden, but it was time for our next meal, which was conveniently located just five minutes walk away. We're here to try the famous Shunden Yoza beef offal. This one is quite famous of nearby Qinghuiyuan. Yeah. It was like established over 40 years. Whoa. And then normally like in weekends or like holiday it's like people will just fly up here to so get a bite of the inside of the cow. I know that sounds incredible, right? This is a small yeah. portion. It smells wonderful. It kind of smells like pancakes. Really? Pancakes? Yeah, it's got a sweetness to it. You smell. What do you smell there? Pancakes, right? 
sweet, but not pancakes. This is my friend Peter. You may remember him from a Shanghai video we did together a few months ago where he took me to try the most amazing crab noodles. He's from Guangzhou and he knows a lot about food, so he came to join us today in Shunda. What you're gonna do is like this, you yeah. poke this thing into whatever you're getting and then dip that into a little bit of chili sauce. Oh, and I want you to give us a rating out of 10. 8.5. Wow, that's that's wow, high that's for Peter. High. Peter knows his food. <laughs> that's a high praise. Oh, I love this one. Oh, I love the sauce. This sauce is amazing. I yeah. mean, Cantonese people, we usually don't eat very spicy. Exactly. Yeah. But we do like a little bit of spiciness. This kind of spiciness also combined with, you know, the fragrance of garlic and yeah. a little bit of sweetness. So yeah. this is like the typical like Cantonese spiciness that oh. we like. I'm gonna dip it a lot or a little? Just a little. Just a little, okay. It's good. Mm. Mm. I really like the texture. It's a little more on the chewy side. Yeah, yeah. But I like that. Yes. If it's too hard or too soft, it's not good. It has to be right tendency mm. of the meat, of the insides. The the sauce is great. It's just a little bit of spice, not enough to like set my mouth on fire. Well, I really like it. I would definitely have this again. This street here is actually a famous snack street lined with shops selling Shunda specialties. It'll be flooded on weekends. Any other foods you think we can try on this street while we're here? How about fish skin? Fish skin? Yeah, maybe. Uh, blow your mind, something like this. Oh, I'm. I'm down for that. Where do we go? Right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, God, Yuki. Okay, there we go. We're right here. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm gone. And here it is, our fish skin. UP in Mandarin. Definitely not what I was expecting. It was served more of as a salad. There's the fish skin there, and it's also mixed with onions, scallions, peanuts, and sesame seeds. This looks beautiful. What did they do with the rest of the fish? Cook it. Oh, okay. So it doesn't. It, they just take the skin and go. <laughs> skin and go, and it just serve as UP the other. You can't go away. Bye yeah. bye. <laughs> Let me tell you that Shunda people will not waste, waste any cell on an Every animal that you're about to eat. We cook everything. Try the skin first okay. and see how it is. And then the next bite, you probably want to get a little bit of everything. I really don't know why I must smell everything before I eat it. Mm. It has like a jellyfish consistency, mm -hmm. that like yes. slight crispiness. So I'm going to try it now with Other everything else. Together. Like a taco. Oh, a UP so taco. You, so you're eating a shunda cuisine in a Mexican way. Yeah, <laughs> get a little piece of onion. Oh, okay. Wow, innovation. <laughs> That's all you need. Look at that. Mm. How about our fish skin taco? It's fantastic. That's how it should be eaten. Should no. be on the menu. Mm -hmm. Should be the way it's supposed to eat. <laughs> the way. The one, the only way. <laughs> You should try. Very <laughs> tiny piece. Yeah, your ratio is a bit off here, Peter. Yeah, but I mean, we don't have a lot of fish skin left, so yeah, there is no it. choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, time to head to our grand finale of the evening, a dish I've been wanting to try for years. We are going to uh, Xin Tan Kong. It's like a porridge hot pot. Porridge hot pot, like kanji yeah. hot pot. Kanji yes. hot pot, zhou di huo huo. Some of the restaurants we've been to in Shunda would be kind of hard to find if you didn't know where to go. So this is where we're going tonight. Oh, look at this wall of foods. Oh, so is it individual hot yes. pots? Yeah, individual. So we have our own? Yes. yes. Oh, that's cool. I thought it was going to be one big pot in the middle. Look at that. You see here it's broken, but it doesn't mean it's not a good restaurant. It's just they don't care about these details at all. Yeah, good food is good food. Exactly. So similar concept to hot pot, you choose the ingredients you want to order, which will then be cooked in your hot pot. Well, in this case, your congee. So our pots of congee have arrived just behind her there. Yes. And now we're just readying the... Oh, 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 a bit of glycerin. Oh, that's fast. So now really our fast. congee has arrived right in front of us. For kanji, we like it to kai hua. And then kai hua means that your grains should be busted. The more I learn about kanji, the more I realize it isn't just one thing. 
congee and congee preferences change from region to region. Just one week before filming this video, I was in Chaoshan, another city in Guangdong province, where they like their congee made with unbroken grains of rice. So you were just telling me that you find the idea of Chaoshan area congee to be quite strange because they use whole grains. Yeah, it's like just literally just rice plus water. For us people, we don't like, we don't prefer it that way of congee. Let me know in the comments below, is there a rivalry between Chaoshan and Cantonese areas when it comes to congee? And if so, let me know your thoughts. Which one do you prefer? <laughs> also, much like hot pot, you need to construct a sauce to dip your ingredients into after they're cooked. For this kind of hot pot, we'll make basically very simple. So I've instructed me to add soy sauce, ginger, cilantro, as well as peanut oil. The oil is very important. It makes the flavor like to another level. While we've been at the sauce station, our dishes arrived. So we've got this that looks gorgeous, actually. Wow, what is that? Deboned carpfish. And as for this one here... This one is the bone of the deboned carpfish. You're telling me they take off the flesh and then they put the bones on the other plate? Yep. That's, that's what, so cool! Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. They're not going to waste any single cell of yeah. fish. How do we use it? How do we eat it? How? Well, I mean, there's a choice. You can choose to eat it or not eat it and use it only as like a flavoring stuff. For your congee? For your congee. The congee will be more flavorful by the end of the day when you eat it. It's gonna, you know, soak in all the flavor from, you know, the meat dish yes, and stuff. Yes. All the flavors combined together, you will get um, a rich flavors of congee. So before any food was put inside, the congee was white and tasteless. By the end of the day, it will become like yellow. It tastes definitely good. Another way congee hot pot differs from normal hot pot is it's a bit more high maintenance. You have to keep mixing it. Otherwise, the bottom's gonna burn and it's gonna ruin the taste of your congee. Time for some fish. Some boneless fish slice. Remember what I told you? Put it in. Yeah, put it in. And um, then, yep, yep. Well, let go, let go. Let go, let go. Let go, and then like stir around. <laughs> and then pick it up. Done. Done. Now I am going to dip this in my luscious sauce here. Sometimes, when you eat a food that's truly delicious, no words are necessary. It's incredible. And I think I'm most excited for this process, the end result, once I've been dipping all of that luscious meats and fish inside and then trying it at the end. I think that's gonna be really, really special. So those bony pieces of the fish are imbuing the most amazing flavor into my congee hot pot. And after many, many more delicious foods were added to our congee pots, it started to turn darker and darker in color. Moment of truth. It's time to try our congee. Oh! Super salty and umami. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm. It coats your mouth, and as it goes down, it's very nice on the stomach. That's very nice. And I tasted it when it first came, and it didn't have any flavor. So it really has got flavor just from those ingredients being put in. Only fresh ingredients like fish, meat. We haven't put any spices or soy sauce or ginger. It's just the original flavor of the foods in that congee. And it's already so salty and delicious. Like, yeah, you don't need those spices. And it's really delicious. I really understand why you, this is a thing now. I, I, I can really understand it. Honestly, a 10 out of 10 experience would recommend congee hot pot for anyone who visits Shunda, whether you like congee or not. I have had the funnest day of exploring Shunda with you guys. Thank you so much, Ivy. It was so nice to meet you and for suggesting all of those amazing places. So good to see you again, Peter. So good to see you again. And you'll be joining us for our next video. We're yeah, gonna be eating course. something really special also here in Shunda. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've learned so much. I'm a real fan of everything we've eaten today, but I really like this congee. And yeah, in the meantime, we will see you next time. Bye.